best kept secret of naturopathy, I think, is that all naturopaths are trained in quackery. Naturopaths, I think, would like to would like their patients to believe, and really lawmakers, legislators, and medical doctors to believe that they can distinguish between science-based and evidence-based therapies and bogus therapies. But in reality, quackery is so cleverly interwoven into the naturopathic curriculum that it's extraordinarily difficult to tease these things apart. And when you come out of naturopathic school, you've essentially been trained for four years in quackery. And whether you like it or not, you will end up practicing quackery. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I realized I was in the wrong profession after really horrifying experience of finding myself accidentally involved in a federal crime. My former boss was importing and administering a dubious drug and, and giving it to cancer patients. This drug is not um, approved by the FDA to treat cancer or any other condition, which makes um, what he did a federal crime. And under his medical orders, I was delivering this drug to patients. And once I found this out, it set a series of events in order which led me to not just leaving my uh, job at the clinic but also retiring from naturopathy permanently. There's different layers of harm that can come from believing in naturopathy. Of course there's the cost, just financially investing in these treatments can be very expensive. Sometimes patients spend tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on alternative treatments. There's also the harm of believing in magic. Sometimes patients will become so sort of taken with the alternative therapies that they will forego conventional treatment. And this can cause a lot of harm because it can uh, delay treatment or prevent them from getting treatment that could potentially save their life. Um, when I decided to leave naturopathy, I went back to school. I got a master's in biomedical research. In this master's program, I met my um, PhD advisor now and one thing led to another and I found myself fortunate enough to be able to pursue a PhD program in this field. I am studying um, the skin microbiome, so I'm in the field of evolutionary genomics and what we look for is signatures of co-adaptation between the microbes that are living on us and our own genome. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of differences. For one thing, I'm learning that it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to create any kind of therapeutic intervention. And so it isn't as easy as looking at some basic science research or reading a paper and saying, oh, in a lab mouse or in a petri dish, this therapy seems effective, so let's use it in humans. To go through the proper protocol and the proper pathway to develop a safe and effective uh, therapeutic, it takes at least 10 years, if not a few decades, and an incredible amount of money to do this type of drug development. Thank you.